Hello everybody, welcome to iCommand, and we are going to be doing the game log review for the finals of the Adepticon at Home Vassal Tournament. Uh, happened back on April 16th, I want to say, and we finally got final match concluded. And this is going to be the last Season 6 game we review on this channel. After this, it's going to be Season 7. Uh, the playtesting league is well underway. We've got a lot of game logs that have come in uh, since the playtesting league started, and I'm excited to start looking at those and maybe putting those up on the channel. Although, actually, right after this, I am planning to put up another uh, campaign video. Just thought it would be fun to break it up a little bit for the uh, campaign fans out there, so definitely keep a lookout for that. <clears throat> All right, so getting right into the game here, we've got... Josh versus Derek uh, made it both to the finals. Congratulations to both of these players. Uh, inter interestingly enough, I believe Josh has the medal <laughs> uh, in his possession that is supposed to go to the winner. So uh, if Josh wins, he gets to keep the medal. Uh, and I think if Josh uh, loses, he's going to have to uh, do double, <laughs> double the work of having to then mail it to Derek personally. Uh, although I... Uh, Hopefully we can get uh, expenses covered for that if it's a big... I think it's a pretty big medal. So, anyway, that's what's at stake here. The extra Adepticon medal that was given out um, to the organizers at Adepticon is going to go to the winner. So we've seen... Uh, I think we've seen both of these lists in action. Uh, we saw Derek's list being used in the final of the Malachor Trials, the competitive league. Uh, and then we saw Josh's list being used in the top four against um, Lucas, uh, is who is, he was playing against. So Josh is playing a Flame Trooper, Riot Trooper Swarm uh, with four officers and Thrawn, and then Zillow Technique Rule by Fear. It's a super strain-heavy list. Uh, uh, he's got, s I want to say, six. Six figures, Dealing Strain and Thrawn Milling. So he's going to mill uh, the Command Dex command cards pretty quickly and then he's playing against Derek and Derek is playing his IG-11 and Mando Hunters list although it is a season 4 Mando not the newest uh, Mando that everyone keeps talking about so this is the original old Mando from season 4 uh, the one that has Beskar armor with uh, power tokens and the original user of the disruptor rifle he's also got Onar, Jabba Dr. Afra, Bib Fortuna, he's got Clan of Two, I believe on Mando, uh, regular Jawa, and Devious Scheme. So that's going to let uh, Derek choose his deployment zone, and he's going to make uh, Josh take the initiative on round one, which is usually an advantage. If you are uh, playing in a skirmish, the player that has initiative round one is usually at a disadvantage, and if you have can keep initiative in round two, it's a big advantage usually. So let's go through the deployment here. Um, and what's really interesting, I think a really cool side effect of using Devious Scheme, we've talked about this a lot, uh, is the, is when you play against uh, Rule by Fear with Dr. Afra, by forcing the opponent to take initiative, you force them to discard to Rule by Fear at the start of the round, uh, which then means you get to excavate whatever they discard with Afra, which is really strong if you can get a round one excavate with Afra. Normally, you're limited to excavating on round two forwards, um, so getting extra value round one is really good, especially if you can get something like an urgency or even, I don't know, something that gives power tokens really good. Uh, looking for a fight, maybe, uh, if you can play it, but... Uh, yeah, so here we go. We've got um, we're playing on stashed away, so you can see the skirmish mission there. This is the one where you get two VPs for each crate you control, and then you open the doors. Very simple mission. I actually like this mission a lot because it's just so simple. Um, this is actually a mission that I use when I d used to design custom missions. I would just use this as a, a filler, a placeholder mission, until I came up with something more interesting. But I think it's actually just a really fun mission archetype. Nothing fancy. All right, so Josh activating first. Going to activate that officer. Move the flame trooper up to the terminal near the middle door. Job activating for Derek. Going to focus Mando. Draw a command card. Another officer activation for Josh. Going to push a riot trooper down towards the bottom of the map. So I should mention Josh up in the top left in the blue deployment zone. Uh, and Derek got to pick the bottom right deployment zone for his uh, deployment. 
All right, we've got uh, Bib Fortuna playing Planning. And I'm sorry, I did not see what got discarded to uh, Rule by Fear. Oh, there it is, hiding down there. Escalating Hostility. That's really good, actually. If Derek can get can use this, if he can get this Excavate to go off this round, that'll deny um, Josh the use of having that extra strain from having it in his discard pile. So uh, Derek's probably going to be really wanting to get an attack off this round so he can then play, he can Excavate and play Escalating Hostility from Josh's discard pile. Um, Alright, so Bib, Fortuna, focused up Onar. And uh, you'll notice that Derek generally does not focus IG-11, uh, mostly because he's either drawn or is hoping to draw guild programming and doesn't want to waste a focus on a figure that can self-focus. So we've got Onar moving up to the terminal. Okay, a card is being played. Where are they putting these command cards? Okay, Thrawn has activated. <clears throat> so let's see, did we see a card get taken off of Derek's hand? Not yet. Um, but it looks like he's going to do it now. Okay, get behind me getting discarded. And then it looks like Field Tactician getting discarded for Foresight, which is Thrawn's command card. So uh, that's going to let Josh draw a card from Foresight, or Foresee. And Thrawn going to also take a block token and moves not quite up to the crate. Uh, he's a bit exposed there, honestly. Um, Derek could easily open his door and then take some long-range shots at Thrawn. Um, one, two, three, four... Well, yeah, it would be long, but it's a focus shot from Mando. Okay. Jawa's not going to open the door, though. Officer playing Planning. This is Josh's last officer activation. So I'm going to refill his hand up to five. A lot of card draw here for this uh, Empire list. Mostly just cycling and then of course planning is great if you can draw it round one. Uh, but a rule by fear also really good. Helps you dig for planning too. Dr. Afro moving all the way to the top right crate. So I'm going to control that and be pretty safe down there. Uh, let's see, Riot Troopers. So I should mention the Flame Troopers are a squad attachment. They activate as part of the Riot Troopers groups, which is what makes them really so strong, um, is that you're getting a triple figure activation that normally you wouldn't be able to be getting. Um, they cost five, so it's 12 points total. So it's, it is standard. Um, you know, right, Rangers are 12 points and they're a tri triple figure activation. Okay, so Riot's going to move up to the door. They're going to block line of sight uh, to Thrawn, as well as the Flames blocking line of sight. So that would have been actually a good uh, tactic there if he was using Thrawn as bait. Uh, he might have gotten Derek to open the door and uh, kind of let his Riots walk right in. So IG-11 activating for Derek. Going to just move up to the blocking terrain in that middle area of the map. Pretty safe. I say safe. Uh, Josh's list is very close range, almost melee centered. Thrawn's really his only long range attacker, so. Ah, uh, but uh, this is now allowing the Flame Trooper to come out and take a shot at IG 11. And let's see. We'll bring the Flame Trooper's card up here. Um, what happened? Oh, <laughs> I was hitting, uh, trying to hit the page down button.
Okay, so there you go. Now you can see the Flame Troopers card there. Um, so doesn't have a reroll. He does get an automatic Pierce one. So he's doing one damage right now. So he'll do bleed and then incinerate for a strain onto IG-11. And it looks like Derek discarding element of surprise for the strain. <clears throat> well, actually, I'm not sure. Because IG should have only taken one strain there, so I'm not sure. But uh, Josh definitely controlling the map here. He's got one, two, three, four objectives under his control. Um, so he's definitely leveraging the objectives here. I'm going to try and force Derek to make a play. Mando's going to come up and take a shot here at the Flame Trooper. So this is going to allow him to get that escalating hostility out of Josh's discard pile. Ah, there. I missed that there was a second escalating hostility played by Josh. That's unfortunate for Derek. Josh got to get that extra value out of his second copy before Derek could remove it. But at least the third copy will only do uh, two strain instead of three strain. So big attack. Looks like tools has been played here. I'm not sure where the players are putting their cards. There they go. Okay, uh, no re-roll on this Mando, but that's going to do 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think that's a kill, yeah, with uh, with Disruptor Rifle for sure, even with Zillow. That's going to go through and one-shot that, that uh, flame. So that was focused and tools. <coughs> and... And now, nice, so now the child gets to activate, removes the bleed, and uh, recovers a damage. I actually believe you, Q, does it do both? Oh, uh, yeah, we did make it do both, nice. So, recovers damage, removes the bleed from IG-11. Uh, and now taking action to control the crate, nice. So, big, uh, big reversal there for Derek, uh, because the child can count for control, he's going to control those two crates with the child there. With Grogu from the Clan of Two attachment. That is also from Season 4. Didn't get a whole lot of play. Season 4 and Season 5 was kind of viewed as like a gimmick. Uh, just kind of a fun card, but with Mando Phoenix Rising getting a lot more a lot of play with Clan of Two, I think people started to realize more what that card is capable of doing and how powerful Grogu can be. Alright, so that's the end of the round. I'm going to try and bring the uh, view over here. So I think Derek's actually... I think they're tied now. Actually, I think... Yeah, they're tied. They each have three objectives apiece. So... Not great for Josh at the moment um, since he wants to try and get those objective VPs um, to add to what he can pick up with his figures but uh, the, the figures have closed the distance here we've got riots on all sides and they are closing in on uh, Derek's hunters Derek is gonna have initiative here oh did he did he I wonder if he didn't use escalating hostility Oh, he couldn't use Exhalating Hostility because the figure was dead, so there was no target. That's unfortunate. Um, but he's going to excavate his Field Tactician. He must have a plan with it, then. Uh, let's see, we've got Call the Vanguard being played by Josh with his uh, last remaining Flame Trooper that can actually use it. Who's going to go and attack Grogu, which is interesting. Um, Derek can incapacitate Grogu if he wants to not have Grogu die. But it looks like he's not going to. So 
So that's gonna kill. That's gonna kill Grogu. Uh, <clears throat> I will point out that force, the force exhaustion ability, the whole one of the big reasons for allowing Grogu to become incapacitated in response to being attacked was it felt well. This is just me. It felt wrong to let people kill Grogu. <laughs> And so we wanted to make it so that you could attack him to take him out of the game, but you couldn't necessarily kill him unless the player controlling Grogu allowed that. And uh, yeah, Derek just did that. He let he let Josh kill Grogu. He could have incapacitated, but if he had incapacitated Grogu, uh, that would have left him in play to be scooped up by Thrawn, um, which is interesting uh, that only a unique figure can can pick up the child when it's incapacitated. Uh, definitely check out Clan of Two if this is all sounding strange to you. This the card does a lot, and it's a lot of uh, flavor. It's really, really based on the end of season one from uh, the Mandalorian. Okay, but that was called the Vanguard. So IG now is going to activate first. Um, I'm betting Derek is not happy that he uh, ex excavated field tactician now that uh, Grogu's gone. So, gonna be a rapid fire, but no guild programming. He might get the kill, though. He does have uh, Bib Fortuna. Let's see if he discards for Bib. Uh, nope, but he does do a nice 5 damage, which means the second attack very likely to kill. He does get a triple block, though. That's gonna do 5. Pierce 1, 2. Ah, uh, he needs to... He rerolled already. I think he might actually be one short here because... Wait, how much do they have? Yeah, they have eight health. So I think he might actually be one short if Josh pitches. Even if even if uh, Derek discards a card to Bib, I think he's one short. So Derek is going to discard to the limit to add a, a damage. <coughs> Now he's doing one, two, wait, did Josh already exhaust Zillow? No, he didn't exhaust Zillow. So one, two, three, four, six. Uh, minus, but yeah. All Josh has to do is pitch. So Josh discarding fleet footed. And Derek not going to be able to pick up that kill. He would have if he had discarded to Bib on the first attack, but it's. He was already doing five damage, so I think it's reasonable to see why he didn't discard there. Uh, so Josh did exhaust Zillow to stop the Pierce 1. Ooh, Grenadier being played by a Riot Trooper. That's going to do a lot of damage if it if it rolls well. Decent, decent roll, so that was 8 damage total. And now we've got, let's see, Flame Trooper attacking uh, Mando. Spends a block token. The Flame Trooper has a Pierce 1 automatically, and Search for plus 2, so that's going to do 5 damage and then 1 strain. Uh, let's see. Oh, we've got Onar, going to add an Evade, so that's going to stop the Surge. Uh, so that's going to do 3 damage and 1 strain. We've got a card being played, but I'm not sure what this is. Guild programming error image. Ah, uh, okay, so this is strain uh, guild programming. I'm using a later version of Vassals, so that's probably why some of these cards are not showing up right. Uh, so Derek discarded a card to strain, it was, and it was guild programming, which was IG-11's card. And then Mando also going to become bleeding from the Flame Troopers. Flame Troopers are brutal. They just pierce one. Uh, strain to every figure that suffered damage from their attack, and then the auto bleed. Like they were even stronger when they first came out. I think they got nerfed, and then they got made a little bit stronger with a added Pierce One. Uh, and the bleed to sort of simulate that they're burning. <laughs> okay, so extra protection is going to get played by Onar here on th as a result of that attack. Uh, little, who's he gonna kill though? He's focused. I imagine he would maybe go for a uh, riot trooper here. Uh, no, he's gonna go for the one health flame trooper. So that's gonna kill the flame trooper. 
six more points for Derek because of Jabba. And now the Riot gets to activate. Riot's going to come up and attack Mando with his baton. So you can see the synergy here between Riot's and Flames. Flames deal strain and deal bleed. Riot deal strain and deal weaken. Uh, pretty good roll there. That's going to be four damage. Uh, what do we got here? Opportunistic. Going to go uh, get to started for the strain from the batons, and then Mando weakened. All right, Mando going to activate. I think we're going to see a flamethrower here. No, he's going to go for the attack on Thrawn. Uh, what is this being played? Primary target being played, so that's going to focus and plus one damage. Uh, parry being played. Oh, this is for the bleed. So Derek discarding parry from the top of his deck for the strain for bleed. And going to disrupt a rifle here. Ooh, that was not good. Not a good roll. Uh, he's got one, two, three, four, five. Minus two, so three damage to throw on there. Oh, four damage. And Derek's going to have to take another damage for strain. Yep, from bleed, and then discards the weaken. Uh, what do we got here? Take initiative being discarded from Derek's deck by Thrawn. That's the last card. Last card in Derek's deck. So Derek's on empty now. And now Thrawn going to take a crack back at Mando. Going to spend that surge token from his ability. Uh, and no block token for Mando who's just got two health left. So Mando goes down. <coughs> Josh still catching up though. And Derek's got Onar left. He also has Afra, who is in th uh, Thwomp range of that riot, so she may want to move out of the way. But he's going to go with Onar. Really gunning for Thrawn here. Which may be because he has Celebration in his hand, because I don't see it in his discard, so that's probably why he's gunning really hard for Thrawn. But this is a long shot for Omar. Uh, he might have it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he got natural, and he didn't get any surges, so he doesn't have to minus accuracy. So four damage to Thrawn. Five if he wants to discard to Bib, but then it's just forcing Josh to discard for Zillow. It looks like he is going to discard for Bib. Heightened reflexes. Oh, no, he's probably playing that. That would actually get him the kill, if he's playing that. Uh, right? Six. Yeah, then Josh can't actually... Can't save him with Zillow. So Derek getting another seven, thanks to Jabba. And then, do we see the celebration? Hmm. Where is the celebration? Did I... Did it get discarded? I wonder if he's just not playing it. Okay, uh, Jawa going to use Excavation to play Field Tactician, the command card w from J uh, Derek's discard pile. And he's going to use that to move IG-11 to safety. And then the Jawa is actually going to attack this Riot Trooper. Uh, Riot Troopers have not gone... Oh no, I think that one did just go. No, it was an officer that pushed it up. So we've got four damage into three, so dealing one damage. Oh, two with a harass to deal a strain. So I think now we're going to see uh, Afra get thumped. What's this, a reroll? Officer going to move and attack Afra. No damage. Hmm. Now Afra can move away and take a shot. One, two, three, four. She has one movement point left. Ugh, not a good roll. 
It's going to do one damage though, because Zillow is exhausted. Okay, officer for Josh, going to push the right trooper forward. And Jabba, let's see. Looks like he's going to order hit with uh, Onar. So he's attacking the 4 health riot with Onar from range 3. Uh, yeah, looks like that's going to do it. So 4 more points for Derek. Jabba is just shooting him past in VPs thanks to uh, nefarious gains on all of Josh's little figures. Although Josh has all his uh, officers still left. Okay. Riot Troopers activating for Josh. Gonna take out this Jawa. Unless it dodges. Nope. That is a dead Jawa. And then gonna go for. Oh, nope. That's a double move. Didn't have an attack. Bib. Could we see Bib attack or will he focus someone? He is gonna go on the attack here. Derek getting very aggressive with his figures. Um, didn't uh, focus anybody this round, just all attacks. Nice, that's for good though, four damage. Josh didn't spend the block token on that one. Which I'm not sure why. So, might be worth mentioning, the Riots get a block token at the end of their activation only if they don't already have a block token. So it actually makes sense to usually spend the block token you get from their shield every chance you get uh, so that you can regenerate it the next time they activate. It doesn't really gain you anything saving it unless you really think the figure attacking you can, like, can't deal any damage like it's an officer. So I'm not sure why he didn't spend his block token there, but um, probably makes sense. I'm sure he'll let us know in the comments, as he usually does. And then Josh moving the officer up, going to take the control of that crate. So Josh controlling three crates, contesting the terminal, and Derek actually controlling no crates here. Still going to mean Josh is catching up. Uh, going into round three and Derek doesn't have initiative he doesn't have take initiative either got discarded by Thrawn so that's gonna mean uh, Josh has initiative here and he's got a full group of riots well I shouldn't say full because they lost uh, they lost a flame trooper but I think we're probably gonna see reinforcements get played here yep there's a reinforcements gonna reinforce one of the riot troopers And Derek still has excavation. He's got a lot of options now. Um, okay, well, Riot Trooper's going to go. So interesting that Derek excavated to the limit. I would expect he's planning to uh, do that with Jabba to focus and then order hit. Okay, Riot Trooper's going to go after... Uh, Gonna go after Onar. Onar playing Iron Will, so he's only gonna take three damage max. So he takes three damage instead of four. So there's Iron Will. Uh, I often talk about Iron Will versus Assassinate in this type of list. I am very much on the side of Assassinate if you have to choose one. It's just always gonna be an extra three damage, whereas Iron Will sometimes stops three damage, sometimes it stops one damage. But uh, Derek very much on the Iron Will side, uh, which goes with his defensive playstyle very well, I think. Uh, so that ultimately went very well for him. Um, urgency going to be played here. Derek's going to negate it with his last card in hand. Going to stop that uh, Riot Trooper from escaping, basically. Second Riot Trooper. This is going to do a lot more damage. Also, uh, Onar will still takes the strain. So this is going to do six damage to Onar. Oh, five damage. Four damage and a strain, which is basically five damage. All right, so Onar survives, so he's definitely going to activate him here. I think it makes sense to run. 
So owner attacking the nearest riot trooper without a uh, defense token. Wow, that was a good roll. Onar has been rolling hot this game. Gotta say. Uh, you love to see it. So that's gonna do six. And he doesn't have anything to discard. No command cards in hand. Nothing to discard for Bib. Uh, Fortuna. And it looks like Josh is gonna discard reinforcements. The second copy to add a block. So Riot Trooper lives with two health left. Uh, that makes sense that he did that because he doesn't want to die to rush. So it makes sense to ditch that card. Riot Trooper going to come up. Ooh, going to play face to face to let him get past uh, Derek's figures and attack Onar. And that's going to do it. Josh pulls past Derek, 31 to 27. And now the second Riot Trooper are going to thump on Bib Fortuna. What's the defense roll? Ugh. Four damage. I think Josh rerolls the blue here. And he gets it. So that's going to kill Bib Fortuna. Putting Josh to 34. <clears throat> Derek down to just Afra and Jabba. Order hit not looking like such a good uh, play anymore since now he's down on, on VPs. Oh, he's got IG-11 too. Okay, so this is still, still he's still in it. Uh, rapid fire. Unfortunately, he couldn't get somewhere where he could rapid fire the, both the 3 health and the 2 health riot. I think that would have been ideal, but uh, he's going to pick up a kill and get 4 VPs here at least. And then he needs to... I don't know. He needs to control these crates. So it goes to 31. And second attack on the officer. Hopefully that's a kill. Yep, nice. He gets the kill. And it's tied up. 34 to 34 with Derek ahead on kill points. It's going to be about the objectives here. And I think Josh has Derek beat. Because he only needs six. And there's three loose crates that he can take. So officer gonna go down and take the crate. Um, what can he do here? What could Derek do? He could kill the riot, go to 38. He could kill the riot, go to 38. Um, he needs to order hit on officer, but then he'd go down to 36 and then go up to 39. So he's one point short of making that work. Um, let's see. I don't know. It's just going to come down to if he can keep Josh from getting six VPs from objectives. So Afra going to activate. Yeah, this makes sense. Go kill an officer instead of killing the riot, and then kill the riot next turn. Um, I don't think that's enough because Josh has uh, Zillow still. He can exhaust it to stop the pierce. Yep. So that officer is going to live with one health left. And it's just going to move up and attack. Does two damage to Afra. And has now positioned the officer uh, out of Afra's line of sight. And I believe out of IG's line of sight. So it's now on. So now what can he do? He's got Jabba. Um, Josh has the one officer left that's on the terminal. So with that, he'll be controlling. Hmm. Yeah, I think that wasn't the right move. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, like, unfortunately, Josh has now positioned the officer so that even with a higher, with a order hit, uh, there's no figures that, that Derek can attack that he can actually defeat. Let me see, does actually, does he have line of sight to this officer? No. Oh, Java's going to come up and attack the riot. Red, green, no abilities. 
Oof, yeah. Zero damage. And that's game. Josh goes to 40. So that was the game. Um, definitely a strong list that uh, Riots and, and Flame Troopers. Uh, always fun to get to see Derek play uh, Hunters and Guardians. And congratulations to both players for making it to the finals. That concludes our tournament coverage for Season 6. We will now be moving on to Season 7. I hope to see you all there. Um, I'll try to do a grab bag uh, video where I just kind of look at a bunch of different vassal logs, not spend too much time on each turn. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time.